So what we're looking for is just good rocky so rocky habitat because predominantly rivers are eating crayfish. So all these big boulders and rocks hold a lot of crayfish, even small smallmouth bass, stuff like that. So we tend to like uh, areas with more moderate depths. You can spread out. We can spread out a lot of holes along this shoreline. You know, one thing that I would tell anglers, first thing they need to do when they come here, especially if they're unfamiliar with the reservoir, is buy a map. Fish and Map Company makes a really good uh, Flaming Gorge Reservoir map. It shows you a lot of the roads to access the reservoir. There's roads all down the length of the reservoir, both sides. It also shows you, con you know, reservoir contour, so you can kind of target areas that, uh, you know, that burbot occupy. Um, a lot of times when I'm looking at trying out a new spot or new location, I'm actually looking for where the reservoir main channel, the old river channel, swings in close to shore and then fishing above or below that. Um, right here we got cliff line down here below, so it's really steep drop off and we're on a moderate depth um, just above that cliff line. So it should be a really good area. It also has a lot of rocky substrate. Yeah. Um, the other thing I'd recommend to anglers is try to fish areas that other anglers haven't already fished or aren't fishing. Um, you can usually tell when people have already burbot fished uh, an area heavily because you'll see a lot of holes um, like we have here that we made. There's people that catch them on mud flats. There's people that catch them on cliff lines. Um, but typically, you know, areas like this are, are uh, typically the best when they're, when they're actively feeding. Um, and what I tell people all the time is just look for smallmouth habitat. If you're a smallmouth fisherman, uh, you would look at this and say, oh yeah, this is good smallmouth habitat. And that's probably where we're going to be too, doing the same thing, targeting crayfish. I've kind of customized my tip ups a little bit. I've got bells on them for one. So a lot of times, you know, if you're out here burbot fishing in the dark, you hear bells ring and it typically means your, uh, your flag is gone. Um, the other thing I've done is I've added a little bit of a reflective tape to the flag. Makes it real easy to shine your headlamp across your sets and uh, see if a flag's up. So I've got a, a 3 8 ounce jig head, glow in the dark of course, with a glow in the dark uh, soft body bait. I've already uh, chopped up some sucker meat, so I'm going to put a small chunk of sucker meat on here. Um, you can go very big on this if you want, but I tend to go a little bit small. Uh, the last thing I want to do is like fill my hook gap, um, which could decrease you know hook penetration upon hook set or or once the fish hits the the tip up. On Flaming Gorge, you're allowed to use six poles or tip ups through the ice only. Um, I'm going to be setting out four tip ups tonight and then also one dead stick uh, rod and then also jig in a rod. Um, some nights, for whatever reason, the dead stick presentations perform a lot better. So the tip ups are a dead stick rod. Other nights I seem to do a lot better just moving around from hole to hole, uh, jigging with a jigging spoon or a, or a soft body bait like this, um, ice trolling if you will, and uh, just pulling fish from hole to hole. I tend to start the night off doing both and then just fine tune it later. Um, I also line out my rod or line out my holes covering a variety of depths. And then if you start seeing fish hitting one particular depth, uh, I'll also maybe spread out using those depths, you know. And so typically most of my fish are coming from, you know, 20 to 30 feet, but I've gotten them as shallow as seven and I've gotten them as deep as 110. So just spread out a variety of depths spread out the length of the shoreline, and then just fine tune from there. What I really like is these um, Gary Yamamoto grubs, the luminous white. Just hit them with a black light. I mean, it's still, it's still light out, you know, and, and they still flash uh, a really good glow. Um, I've also done really well with Northland buckshot spoons. I like the 3 8 ounce. Uh, same thing, I'll tip it with sucker meat, and then I'll actively jig that although I have got them on dead stick presentations, but I seem to do better when I'm actively jigging the jigging spoon and, and just doing my dead stick presentations with a soft, soft body bait. Radical glow tubes work really good too. Um, they actually seem like they glow longer, so you don't have to recharge them as frequently. Um, but these Yamamoto's, they, they glow really bright. Okay, so we'll go set a tip up. So, drop this tip up jig all the way down to the bottom and now what I'll do is I'll spin it up three turns and that pulls it up off the bottom 
and also compensates for the length of the shaft when you drop it in the water. And then I'll set it like that. And now when it goes off, the flag will fling up and the fish will take the line and you just set the hook. Once again, it's got reflective tape, a bell so I can hear it, reflective tape so I can shine on it and tell if the flag's up. Um, this inflow reach of the reservoir where the two main tributaries, the Black's Fork and the Green River come in, um, we actually documented a 53% decline in burbot abundance this year and we also had a decline last year so it's good to see that on a declining trend. Um, reservoir wide, uh, burbot abundance was actually down 34% and that there was also a decline last year so we're on two years of declines um, for burbot abundance in the reservoir. I like to think that anglers are having the most impact. You know, there's a lot of anglers that come out here, take advantage of uh, burbot, do a lot of harvesting for us. Um, anglers have really responded to, uh, you know, Wyoming Game and Fish and Utah Division of Wildlife Resources call to assist us with this burbot population. Burbot are actually in a lot of uh, their native range in a lot of states, you know, they're there's actually conservation measures in place to protect burbot um, because their numbers are so low. Uh, a lot of the, the the research that's been conducted on burbot shows that um, they're real susceptible to uh, predation. Um, lake trout and smallmouth bass actually being uh, two of their dominant predators like in the Great Lakes area. Also water development, you know, dams, things of that nature um, impacting their ability to you know, migrate, move to spawn, um, but also angler exploitation. And that's the tool we're trying to use here. We already have the predators. Uh, we obviously already have the water development. Um, we're just trying to employ um, angler exploitation as a tool and, and hopefully impact their, their population in the reservoir. Yeah, that's a big fish. It's kind of surprising. Doesn't look very, very thick. You know, typically this time of year, they're spawning, or getting ready to spawn, so they'll be really, really thick through here, you know, because they've got um, swollen gonads, so. But we'll cut it open later. Who's gonna eat it? <laughs> it's a big one.